uh, for this message today. The title of the message is Empowered, Empowered to Learn. So this is about learning. You know, a lot of times we just think about teaching, but this is about learning. And it's easy. If we're not responsible for learning, then you just go and you kind of show up when you want to. And, and uh, But if you're interested in learning, uh, the best way we can learn is if we're all in agreement and in unity and we come mm -hmm. prepared with our hearts to learn what the Holy Spirit would uh, have, would teach us uh, on each day. So that's that's real important. And what I want you to see from this scripture is that we come into rest and then we learn of him. So it's rest that empowers us to learn. And so we rest, then we learn, and then we find rest. So it's a it's yeah, this hallelujah. cycle that goes on and on. Uh, rest, learn, rest, learn. It goes on and on. Now, busyness and negativity will fight against learning and will fight against rest. Oh. All kinds of busyness and uh, negativity. And so if a person's real busy, uh, even as they come into this uh, service, then they're not going to be prepared to receive. So it's important to be prayed up and receive so that we're all in agreement and in unity that we can receive what the Holy Spirit uh, is uh, speaking to us. And then we draw that uh, from the Holy Spirit. It says, don't quench the Holy Spirit, but give him thanks. And so yes, we're going to give him thanks to and freedom uh, uh, today to, to move. We want him to move. We want to hear from him. Uh, revelation knowledge. What is it uh, that he wants to teach us in this message? Empowered to learn, to learn of the Lord. And so uh, what do we do? Well, it's about the presence of the Lord. Uh, Exodus 33, 14 says, my presence brings rest. Ooh, I <clears throat> mean. So where are we yeah. going to find rest? But in his presence. Mm. It's going... <clears throat> Rest is a gift. It, mm. it comes. You have to believe for it. You have to receive it. Rest comes from the presence of the Lord. And but then we have to war to keep keep it because there's some things warring against our rest, and that's any kind of busyness, uh, even the things that we're thinking about before we come here. Uh, those things are they keep our mind stirred up, and we're not able to learn of the Lord. And so we, we need to stay in rest. Now, what is rest? Well, it's a quietness and a confidence mm. that we're going to enjoy his presence. We can be in his presence and enjoy it. And we're going to fight off the things that would keep our mind stirred up and busy uh, to keep us away from the Lord. So staying at rest. Now, the thing about rest is that every circumstance that comes your way, there is a place of rest if you pursue it. If you seek uh, the Lord and you want to enter into rest, it's otherwise your mind gets busy with the things of the earth and the things of uh, circumstances, circumstances, all of those things uh, that keep you stirred up. And so rest, when we really rest, uh, and so it's a it's a very powerful force to stay at rest. Let's look at God in uh, Genesis chapter two, verse the first three verses. Uh, Genesis two, and he said, uh, uh, after he had created the heavens and the earth and the lights in the heaven, then he rested. He completed his work and he rested. And he did it. He did two things uh, on the rest. He blessed it, he blessed rest, and he sanctified it. He made it holy. You know, rest is holy, and uh, it keeps you holy, it keeps you focused on, on holy things when your mind is at rest. Now, there's another word that's closely related to rest, and that is peace, the peace of God. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 says, let the peace of God 
rule in your hearts. Let it rule. Let it take charge of your situation and be thankful. So one of the things that's going to uh, hold down all of the busyness and all of the uh, noise in your mind is to be thankful. Be thankful mm. to the Lord for what he has done. Seize this present moment with thankfulness. Amen. See, if we're not thankful, we'll regret what has happened in the past. There'll be all kinds of things that we regret about the past. We'll also be anxious about the future. Mm. Oh, is this going to happen? And worry about the future. Oh, the, what, the way you keep... <clears throat> In the present moment is to be thankful for what God is doing, not what he did 30 years ago necessarily, but what he's doing, what he's doing in your life. Be thankful and the peace of, and let that peace of God rule in your heart. And also uh, uh, another verse that's similar to that is Philippians 4, uh, 7, uh, let the peace of God uh, that, passes uh, that passes all understanding uh gird up or guard your heart and mind so it's not just your heart but it's your mind and so be at peace and be at rest uh, just enjoying the presence of the lord because when you're experiencing his presence you are at rest and you are aware of him and in and his rest when you're in his rest you will hear his voice and you will feel his presence. You will sense that his presence is with you. And that's when you're at rest because his pre presence brings rest. Now, and that's when you can learn. And that's when you can learn. Otherwise, your mind is going to be busy. You're going to be thinking about things of the past. You're going to be thinking, worrying about the future. And you can't learn in that environment like you can when you're at rest and that's the reason it's good for all of us uh to be in unity and in one mind and one accord that we're going to learn from the lord today and the next time we meet let's have that same goal and same motivation that we've come here not just for a religious meeting not just to see and be seen uh, not to show ourselves off not to see what other people are doing but to hear what the Spirit would speak to us. Amen. And let's be in one mind and one accord. And that's what's going to happen today. I, I, I believe that the Lord is leading us and guiding us yes. in this message today. It's a different message. We're not stopping at teaching and saying, well, we teach this. You teach. This is about learning, going a step further, going beyond just uh, teaching about the Word of God. And then, and then you go out after this and say, well, it's a good word. I don't remember what it was, but it's a good word. But today <laughs> it's about learning. It's about learning. And it's the same for uh, day after day. What's, what's ahead? Be, be in rest. Then you can learn. And when you learn, it's going to bring back rest to you. You're going to go deeper into rest where you can be aware of his voice. You can hear what he's saying mm -hmm. and you can sense that his presence is with you. Now we know, see, that God is with us. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about it. It's in the scripture. He said, I'll never leave you, no, nor no, I'll, no. will I forsake you. But this is going to a different level uh, because let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. He says, he has raised us up mm. and seated us in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Now, that's the same thing that we saw in Genesis chapter two, that God rested. He called it holy. He, he blessed it mm. because there's a blessing mm. and rest. Where are we? We're seated in heavenly mm -hmm. places and that's rest. That when you sit down, you're at rest. If you're running around doing all of these things, if your mind uh, is running around and busy with this and busy with the past and busy about the future and you're not at rest but when you are seated in heavenly places mm -hmm. with christ mm -hmm. then you are at rest you have peace and what is god going to do he's going to call that blessed mm -hmm. he's going to bless you and he's going to sanctify it he's going to separate it out for the work of the kingdom he's going to separate mm -hmm. you out for the work of, of the, the kingdom, kingdom 
when you're at rest. Now, if you're busy and all your mind is, is busy, busy, busy about all the things that have to be done, then, then you're not at rest. You're not at peace. But Jesus said, my peace I give you. It's the same kind of peace Jesus operated with on this earth. Now, Amen. that's pretty exciting. Amen. Amen. One of the things I want to say is the word disciple has two different meanings in the Bible. Uh, two, two different meanings. One of them means a learner. Oh, hallelujah. That's what we're talking about. But one of them just means a follower. And so there's a big difference. Some disciples are learners and some disciples are followers. <clears throat> They're not learning anything. They show up at the meetings. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're dressed up in their finest, in their Sunday finest. They show up because they're a follower, but they don't learn. But there's two kinds of disciples. There are learners and there are followers, mm -hmm. which are you. Now, when you stop learning, then you're no longer a dis disciplined learner. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, um, I, John 8, uh, 31, he said, if you continue in my, my word, word, you'll be my true disciple. Truly, you'll be my disciple. You'll be my disciple indeed. That's the learning. That's a, called a true disciple. He wanted to call those a true disciple, the New American Standard. That's a true disciple. So they're learning, not just following. You know, Joseph of Arimathea, uh, he came and got the body of Jesus after Jesus was crucified and he did some great things with it. He he put spices on it. He 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 covered it up, and he and he took it and buried it in a tomb. That's all. Mm -hmm. But he's just a follower. He wasn't described as the disciple who was a learner. He was a follower because there's two different kinds of disciples, and we want to be that disciple who's learning. And that's the reason we're talking about learning today. We all need to be in agreement that we're going to be learners. Well, that's the kind of disciple we want to be. Yeah, let's sing our little song. <clears throat> the Lord gave us a song a long, long time ago, and some of you may may have already heard it, uh, but this is the kind of disciple uh, we, we want to be. A, a true, true disciple, a true disciple, that's me. A blood-sucking leech I will never be. Let's do it again. A true disciple, a true disciple, that's me. A blood-sucking leech I will never be. We want to be a learner. Oh, yes. A true disciple. And that's one who learns. Yes. Who learns from his Lord. You know, it says that the disciple is not above his teacher. The, dis the learner is not above his teacher, but he's like his teacher. And that's what we want Hallelujah. to be. We want to be. Like, like Jesus, Jesus, we have to learn of him. So we have to, all you who labor and are heavy laden, mm. come to me and I will give you rest and take my yoke upon you. Come join me. That's why he oh, said, hallelujah. be joined to me and, and then you'll learn of me because I'm meek, meek and, and lowly. lowly. Now, uh, meek and lowly there and it means he's humble, but he's also a learner. Jesus was a learner. Did you know that? Jesus was a learner, and we're supposed to follow Jesus. He was humble enough to learn. He, he didn't come out uh, out of the uh, uh, manger haughty and say, well, I'm not, I, belong, I know everything. I'm the king of kings, so I don't need to no, know No, he didn't. He, he, he humbled himself, and the Holy Spirit came upon him, and he only did what he saw the Father do, and he only spoke what he heard the Father say by the Holy Spirit. So he was a very humble person the most humble person obviously but he was a learner and that's what we need to be we don't just come to to uh, see and be seen now a person uh, in the bible who who was a learner was david mm. and uh, because he'd come at, and rest and he learned some things and so the lord said uh, that psalm 23 which david wrote was a psalm of rest and so I want Sherry to read it. And we could read it out of the King James, but I chose the Passion Translation just for us to give us a little different perspective because I know we're all very familiar with this passage. But this is a psalm of rest. 
And David wrote it. Let, let's hear what it says. It says, Yahweh <laughs> is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace near the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. And that's a word for at least five people that are listening today. I'm going to read it again. That is where he restores and revives my life. <clears throat> that's at least five people that are watching this video. He opens before me the right path and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious <clears throat> feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight, you anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. So why would I fear the future? Only goodness and tender love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Hallelujah. I think that's an awesome psalm, regardless what translation you look at. But I wanted to shake it up by looking at a different translation yeah. today than we're familiar with. But it's a, a psalm of rest. And that didn't mean that David didn't face any circumstances. He said, my enemies are all around me, right. but you're preparing a feast for me in even, the midst yeah, of my enemies. The very presence and, of and my wherever enemies. wherever I go, I know I'm going to encounter a few things. I'm going to encounter goodness and mercy. Whoa, glory. Hallelujah. Now, well, Hallelujah. My, yeah, I know what my future holds. Goodness Miss and, and mercy. mercy. Now, it didn't mean that he wasn't going to go through some things, but he was at rest. This is a psalm of rest. And David learned some things. And I tell you what he learned, we see it in uh, 1 Samuel 17. He learned how to kill a lion. He learned how, how to, to kill, kill a bear, bear. And he learned how, how to, to kill, kill a giant. giant. Hallelujah. See, you don't learn those things. Well, being in turmoil, you wouldn't know how to kill a, a, a giant. Lion or a lion or, or a, a bear. Or a lion or a bear. you got to be at rest. Oh, this, this is a way... You just grab that old line, you will grab him by the whiskers, and you you hit him with your staff, and you, <laughs> whatever the Lord says to you, the Lord will tell you. you hallelujah. You'll, you'll learn when you're at rest. See, David stayed at rest, even in battles, and even in circumstances that were difficult. Even he, in the darkness. Even going through the dark places. He stayed in mm -hmm, rest. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're supposed to do. That's what God wants for each of you to be at rest. Because when you're at rest, listen to me, this is real important. When you are at rest, you can hear the Lord's voice. Glory yeah. to yeah. God. Hallelujah. Now we know he's with you, but you'll sense his presence mm -hmm. with you. You'll feel his joy. You'll feel his presence upon you when you're at rest. Now, now, that's not going to happen if, if you're all concerned about uh, what's going to happen to my children, what's going to, where's the money going to come for, for, for the bills this month, and oh, is the car going to work, or are they, all of the busyness and the businessness of the world and the cares uh, and the deceitfulness of riches, if we get caught up in these things, yes, if we get caught up in these things, we're, we're not in a place of rest where we can learn of the Lord and we can receive from him. That, that's what it's about. Yes. And I have one thing here. <clears throat> this, this verse says, uh, uh, I'll never be lonely. I'll never be lonely for you are near and for 
there are some of you that are watching this video that you have felt lonely. You have felt like there was no one around that even cared about whether you were alive or not. Let me tell you something. The Lord is with you and the Lord is near to you. And the Lord is saying to you today that he's watching over you, that he knows everything about you and that he is bringing uh, those, those people to you uh, that, will, that will bring comfort to you, that will bring encouragement to you. And so I speak that to you now in the name of Jesus. So let's be <clears throat> a disciple but a learning disciple, a, a disciplined learner. And the way that we do that is you have to realize that you have to lay down your life, pick up his life, take up your cross and follow him. That's what, what Luke 14 mm -hmm, is all about. Mm -hmm. It's about laying down your life and receiving his life and taking up your cross and following him and realize that you are a learner, that, that you have not, arrived. Mm. Paul, uh, Paul even made this statement. I have not arrived yet. I, I haven't reached the goal yet. I've got a goal out there and I want to go higher with the Lord, but I haven't reached it yet, but I'm going to keep pressing on. I, I've got to keep learning. Uh, see, Proverbs makes this really interesting statement that a poor man uh, will not receive instruction. He will not receive a rebuke. Uh, he's just not going to accept a, a rebuke. He's not going to be instructed. He's not going to learn. A poor man has stopped learning. Uh, now, there are people that, that uh, are broke, but they, they're still learning. They, they want to go on. They, they, maybe, they've, maybe they've had some setbacks, but, but they're not, they haven't given up. But see, this proverb is talking about a, a person who has stopped learning, who has given up mm -hmm. and, and they they found themselves to be a poor person and that's where they're going to stay i think about a, a young man i met <clears throat> years ago that uh he had tried to have a business and and the business failed that's number one mm -hmm. then he started another business and, and his business failed that's two two businesses that failed and, and then he started a third business and the third business failed. And then he came to me and he was still willing to learn. And so I taught him and some other people taught him and he turned around and he made tremendous changes in the financial mm -hmm. industry. And he was able to buy his own business and have a successful business with his son. But his impact was so great not because of the failures that had happened, but because he continued to learn. And even though when I met him, he was broke, but he hadn't stopped learning. And he wasn't, that wasn't the end of his story that, that he was a failure three times over. No, that wasn't the end of his story, but he was going, he was going to succeed in life. He was going to be very successful, very rich, and he would have a business just as a hobby with his son. He had enough money, he had enough influence that he could have a, a, a business with his son just because he wanted to work with his son, but that really wasn't the source of his money. It, it was all of the other things because he hadn't given up. <clears throat> but Proverbs is talking about a poor man that's given up, that's not learning anymore, that's settled on the situation. But let me tell you, none of us have arrived. If Paul could write, I have not arrived, then that applies to all of us. We can all say we have not arrived yet, but we know where we're headed and we're going to keep going in that direction. And, and even though I fall seven times, I will not give up because we can learn to go on and we can overcome when we spend time in the presence of the Lord because, because he wants us to come into his presence and br he will bring us rest. And then we have to guard the rest. 
you have to guard it because mm -hmm. your mind is still want to be your mind is still going to want to be active and, and thinking about all of the uh, bad stuff and all of the noise and all of the evil and everything the world's just going down 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 that's what your mind's wanting to think because that's what the world is feeding you but god has rest for you and in his presence he's going to teach you where to go how to prosper in this life and to be a success and, and there's no failure in god if you stay in his rest Woo, hallelujah. hallelujah that's beautiful hallelujah that's beautiful we want to stay in god's presence in god's presence in his presence, there is power. In his presence, there is love. In his presence, uh, there is his peace. Hallelujah. And I believe that along with that peace comes prosperity. I believe as we learn of him, uh, then we begin to prosper. We begin to prosper in our spirit. We begin to prosper in our minds, begin to prosper in our souls. And then we begin to prosper in our bodies. Hallelujah. 